The Sunset Strip. It's seen a good share of rock and roll over the years. But most recently, it is playing host to a new kind of music. A rock and roll which even the more ardent rock aficionados find distasteful. Ladies and gentlemen, from the garages of Abbey, the Jones. New wave promoter Rodney Bingenheimer. What kind of future do you see for punk rock? It's going to last for a while. I mean, punk rock has always been here. When, when a truck driver went and stepped into a studio in Memphis and started cutting That's All Right Mama, Elvis <laughs> Presley. What kind of money is behind this stuff? Not very much. It's pretty much on the street situation. Right. Tell us, who do you think is on the horizon as far as new wave talent is concerned? Well, there's a group called Devo, I think, are going to be the next big thing. They're going to get a lot of the same crowd that would go after uh, Roxy Music. They've got people like David Boy interested in them and Iggy Pop. And a lot of big record companies are interested in them. What about the Sex Pistols? Are they responsible for what is happening here in America? Or is the local action in L.A. really responsible for the, the rise in America? Well, I think the Sex Pistols had a lot to do with it because of the headlines they've been getting receiving when they first started out and then with the radio show that I do I'm always playing them and bands listen in and go we're better than the Sex Pistols so we're going to do it. Hello Los Angeles this is Xene of X and you're on Rodney on the Rocks at KROQ FM in Pasadena. I don't know I never follow like the real radio I just come in every week with all my records and pray that you know I'm going to be on that, that night. FM was this breath of fresh air that came across the spectrum and said, well, we'll play anything. We'll bring in a tape and we'll play it. And as they became successful doing that, large corporations, uh, ABC, Metro Media, and others uh, took over and realized them they were enormous profit center potential. Well, because we were owned by ABC, there is a very definite and somewhat constricted method that we have to use to pick our music. No playlist on my show. Sometimes I actually write out a couple of things before. <laughs> In furnishing the American public its listening fair, the 400 independent stations and the 1,000 network affiliated stations alike are able to exist for only one reason, the advertising of commercial products. How does it feel when all of a sudden your records now are being played on more and more radio stations? There's a hot radio station in LA, KROQ, that plays a lot of the new music. Now, Radio programming people all over the country are looking to this kind of music. Does it make you happy, finally? Yeah. Well, it's about time. And uh, there's... <laughs> it's been a hard fight. Yeah, well, it's not just us. There's a lot of bands in America that should be on the radio that aren't. But it's starting to change. And K-Rock's a good station. Well, he is one of the best-known DJs in the world, for that fact. Rodney Bingenheimer, reigning as the Prince of Pop for 20 years on radio station KROQ. He was the first to play records by Blondie, the Ramones, Sex Pistols, and Nirvana, to name a few. If it weren't for him, there would have been no Talking Heads, no Devo, no Blondie, no Duran Duran, no Depeche Mode. So he is key to the history of Orange County music. Indiana Jones of music. Rodney was always like, we've got to be cutting edge. We've always got to be looking for new music. I'm sure Rodney gets sent probably about 35 to 40 CDs weekly. He would actively listen to everything that was sent to him. And if he wasn't getting enough new music, he would go out and hunt for it. And God bless him for that. Before I was an adolescent, I was in a band called Agent Orange, and we made a song called Bloodstains. And back then, you would put your song on a 8-track. Um, and then we drove up to K-Rock, and we gave it to him. But then we got back in the car, we were driving home, and he played it that night. And uh, he would do stuff like that, which was, which was awesome. He was very influential in actually creating, I think, what became alternative music. Foot rock and roll, Rodney. Yeah. The music that he's brought has influenced 
thousands of radio stations, DJs, and bands around the world. And for that, he's owed an enormous debt of gratitude. Market, please. All the way, all the way, Mark. That's good. So, when, um, tell, when did you first uh, know about Rodney or first? Um, actually, my older brother, I think, basically was the guy that um, used to listen to Rodney all the time. So Rodney would play all the new stuff, the new shit, you know, the, the weird stuff. And um, and then, I don't know, I remember when we were in the band, no doubt, well, years ago, years ago, we'd see Rodney sitting over there, you know, <laughs> we'd be like, that's Rodney on the rock, you know, <laughs> we'd be like, that's him. It was always a really big deal. He's, he's like a star, you know. 28 years old. I've been listening to K-Rock since, for you know, I used to like go to see Richard Blade at like the skating rink. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Rodney. Thank you. Congratulations. Bonnie, uh, I'm Gwen. This is Bonnie. Gwen, when's the first time you heard Rodney on the radio? Do you remember? I, I was probably in eighth grade, probably eighth, seventh maybe, possibly. So just a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly.
is Rodney Bingenheimer? He in, he really his show really number one uh, affected my aesthetic uh, musically. His taste in punk was also like my taste in punk. He likes things with hooks. He likes things that are catchy. He likes things that are buzzy. He likes good-looking English boys. You know, like he likes he gets the joke about almost every good band. How, how did you meet Rodney first time? I stalked him. Um, he used to go to Denny's um, uh, by the Guitar Center. You knew that he would go to Denny's on Thursday night and Sunday night, and that's where you could find him. And so I, uh, I dropped off a tape. And you played it? He played it instantly. He's the first person that ever played us, ever. On my very first show, my early shows on Rodney on the Rock, that's all I would play was the CBGB's bands because there weren't you know, hardly any punk bands in L.A. There was a couple of them. But CBGBs, you know, I was playing, you know, Blondie, the Ramones, Talking Heads, Tough Darts. I even did an interview with Hilly. He called in, the owner from CBGBs. And I used to play all the CBGBs bands, played there. And then the whole LA punk thing started happening. And, you know, and then I played a lot of Ramones. My show, in fact, my first guest on my very first show was the Ramones. What, what, do you think the Ramones are probably the one band that you love the most that, out of the CBGB scene? Well, the Ramones and Blondie, of course. Blondie, of course. Deborah Definitely, Harry. yeah. Rodney, what is, what's going on with you right now? Well, I'm, I'm doing this show on Sunday nights, Rodney on the Rock, and I'm doing a book along with Harvey Kubernick and Mark London uh, about the glitter glam scene when I used to have the English disco. I had like a CBGB's thing, but it was a glitter yeah. disco with David Bowie, T Rex. Yeah. Because the Brian Ferry hung out there, Robert yeah. Plant hung out there, yes. David Bowie hung out there. That was the Mark place Holland, to be. T yeah. Rex. Yeah. I mean, the and music. of course the Ramon, uh, the the Runaways the, were born there. Yes. And believe it or not, um, Didi Ramon actually came to the English disco when it first started out. And of course, Patty Smith came there, and I'd like, I'd love to see a movie about that. Yeah, about the English disco. I'd love to see a movie because that place was illustrious. Yeah, I'll just wait till the book comes out. Nice. It's called Rodney Bingenheimer's Glitter Rev a Glitter Revolution. Do you do you know that they're rerunning the monkeys now on uh, Me TV? I think it is. Yeah. Or do you watch it? Yeah, I don't even get royalty checks. I should.